Hi, I'm Catherine Bourguignon with the Terra Foundation for American Art. I'm one of the curators here and I'm based in Paris. I've been working with um, some of the paintings that were painted in Giverny for the last, I would say, 15, 16 years since I've been with the Terra. And I was able to do a lot of research on these works um, many years ago for an exhibition. So we're starting with this painting by Frederick Friedzke, um, Lady in a Garden, from about 1912. Now I'll explain why we don't know the exact date but it is a riot of color and paint strokes. We have the sort of thick, roughly painted garden, and this woman in a striped dress who's kind of lost within it, as if we can't quite tell what's foreground and background, as if it blends off the edges because of the incredible energy of this piece. We're not exactly sure if it's his wife. He does use his wife as a model a lot. Um, we believe that it's the garden in Giverny, but we also know he had a house um, a slightly later um, in Normandy. So if it's not his wife, it could be a paid model. He and um, these other expatriate artists working in the village would often hire models from Paris to come and pose, especially if they were posing nude for any of the paintings. And this woman, um, I think that the identity isn't important. It's not a portrait. It's something where um, he needed the, the, the female figure to wear this fantastic striped um, dressing gown and stand in the garden, but I don't think that he's really uh, giving us any evidence of a, of a personality or an identity. I can tell you a little bit about Frizeke himself. He was one of the artists who came to Giverny fairly late, and what we call um, the sort of second group or second wave of artists who came to Giverny. And Giverny is the small town in France where Claude Monet moved in the early 1890s and uh, without meaning to, he attracted a lot of artists. So we know that between the period of, say, 1885 and 1915, more than 300 artists worked in this village, many Americans, but not only. And this kind of second wave of artists who came there were coming to Impressionism late. They were, um, Frieseke, for example, was born in 1874. 1874 is the year when Monet exhibits um, Impression Soleil Levant, which is the first painting that kind of gives its name to Impressionism. So he's, he's almost a second generation um, of artists looking at uh, Impressionism. So Frieseke starts coming to Giverny in 1904 and comes back with his wife, 1906. He's learned about the village and all the artists who work there because he's been studying with Frederick McMonies in, um, in Paris, taking painting lessons. And he comes out there and then from the time he's there with his wife, they actually live every summer in a house that's located just next to Monet's house and gardens. They're working, it's called Le Hameau, the Hamlet. It's this little uh, house and gardens that still belongs to the Terra Foundation for American Art today. And he and his wife are living and working there. Um, he's giving lessons, he's painting, and he, they come back every year for 10 years. And so when he's in Giverny, he's painting in this incredibly bright, um, impressionist, but what people are calling decorative impressionism. He is not interested in the envelope of atmosphere that Claude Monet has developed. Instead, he is using some of those tools of bright color, rough brushstroke, lack of shadows, these colors that are the Giverny colors, the purples and greens that you find throughout paintings of this period. And people are calling it a decorative impressionism because of the overall effect, because the fact that there is no specific focal point and you get this sense. And so Frieseker and a few of these other artists who are working there in the 19, um, after 1900 exhibit together in New York in 1910 and they are called the Giverny Group. And there is a review of this exhibition that's very surprising because remember now, Claude Monet is still alive. He is working quietly in his studio. He is painting the masterful uh, water lilies at this time. Still the father of Impressionism, still very important, but kind of fading. This is his later life and the artists in France have moved on. So the Giverny Group, 1910, and the American critics say, ah, this is what Monet wished he could be doing. So this is a sort of surprise um, uh, celebration of American artists uh, working in the, in the village and uh, moving on away from the traditional 
version of Impressionism. Friesecker did not often sign his paintings. Some of them, we have several works in the Terra collection that we do know when they were painted because of when they were exhibited. But this one was not included in that uh, Giverny group exhibition in 1910, so we dated approximately 1912. We do think that he painted it in Giverny, in the village. This style that is not exactly Impressionism that Frederick Friesecker is, is developing is um, recognizable for being his style because it has these really bold uh, dashes of color, dashes and spots, but almost separated. And if you look closely at the painting, especially in some of the foliage and flowers in the foreground, you can almost see the bare canvas um, behind showing through. And that seems okay for him. It's as if he's trying to uh, produce something that's more um, of the moment. And so that is the aspect maybe of Impressionism that he has um, taken.